Okay, I'm with Julian Marceau, a lecturer in UCD, author of The Political Economy and Media Coverage of the European Economic Crisis, The Case for Ireland. Uh, Julian Marcel has been described as the following, a messiah and self-appointed guru and also an obscure academic by Jerry O'Regan, um, the finest conspiracy theorist I've heard in a long time from Geraldine Kennedy, ex-editor of the Irish Times, A Man of the Hard Left by Dan O'Brien. I attach no credence whatsoever to Dr. Marcel and his views regarding the Irish Examiner. They are from a planet I neither recognise nor inhabit and they do not apply to the Irish Examiner. Far left, not a media academic, and has never worked in the Irish media. That's from Michael Clifford from the Irish Examiner Journalist. So, uh, Julian, I was just going to ask, um, Geraldine Kennedy was quoted at the banking inquiry as saying journalists were less well-placed than others to make an accurate assessment. What are your thoughts on this? Um, wh why were they less well-placed? Yeah, I think what she means is that... Um they uh, rely on experts to, uh, or government officials for what they write. And uh, at one level, it's true that they rely on others, but we, we all do. And uh, the interesting thing it implies is that journalists are just there to report what others say uncritically, mm. which is a very, it's very um, um, insulting to journalists in a way. She's just yeah. saying they, should, they don't think, they just report. So if you think like that, of course, you, the press is almost useless because you can just read the press releases yourself or uh, software can do it, uh, just tailor them. Uh, so journalists should um, look for the truth and uh, challenge uh, what people in power are saying or anybody. Um, and if they do that, then they'll reach very different conclusions than what the government is saying usually. Um, so I think it's actually uh, yeah, very interesting in that way what she says. Would you like to comment on what the senior RTE journalist you mentioned has said about press releases and uh, what implications does this have for those who view news as fact? Yeah, the, the story was that I was saying that the media, just given a talk, saying that the media uh, had sustained the housing bubble, been uncritical about it and not really warned anybody about it uh, in any significant way. And the journalist was trying to defend himself with the guy at RT, and he was saying, no, it's not our fault, because you know what happens, you know how we work. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, sometimes I go for lunch, and then I come back from lunch, an hour after I look at my mobile, there's like a dozen press releases uh, on my mobile from companies, government, or whoever uh, sends them. Uh, and he says, you know what I do? I look at them, and then I just copy and paste, tweak a little bit, and that's it. That's my article. So you see, it's not my fault, I just report what they said. So it's really, again, interesting because journalists, the problem is that they depend on those press releases a lot from PR agencies or institutions, and uh, they do that very quickly because they don't have maybe the budget to go very far often. Uh, but again, it's a really robot way of uh, seeing journalism. Um, and uh, that's why I thought it was very interesting. Attempting to defend himself, he actually showed that they're uncritical. And okay, so just for somebody who wouldn't be familiar with how the news works, so basically they're watching the news and what they're viewing as fact is basically a lot, a lot of the time maybe a PR release. Yeah, a lot of it is PR release. Uh, journalists are under time constraints and budget constraints mm. because news organizations are uh, there to make money. Mm. So it's perfectly rational to do it like that. It doesn't mean that it's good journalism, but within the context we have, uh, it, it makes sense. So uh, if you have uh, only a few hours to write an article, um, well, you're not going to go take your car and go to a trip to the countryside and take your time to interview people. You're just going to get the press releases where information is. And that means usually institutions that release a lot of information. You're not going to find... It takes more time to find the press release by an anti-poverty agency, maybe because mm. it's one every two weeks or something. If you have the government as a secure source of um, news, you're used to that. And then, like the guy said, the, the, the journalists, you just look at your mobile, uh, they're sent to you, and that's it. It's very okay. efficient, and it makes sense. If, you, if your goal is to make more money than, uh, than anything else, it makes sense. What evidence is there to suggest that journalists were leaned on not to criticize the housing bubble? Uh, uh, there's a good paper about that that's been published uh, by Irish academics and they interviewed journalists about that very question and they asked, uh, were you influenced by editorial office mm. or any other interests? And 
They said, yeah, we were. Um, so we were told that if we don't report favorably on certain developers or the housing market in general, uh, advertising money could go elsewhere, like leave the paper, and we wouldn't have access to um, the developers for um, interviews or information by the, the PR agencies. They would deny that information, that access to the certain developers. So there is evidence of that. Now, the broader point I'd say maybe more important than that is that most journalists or many journalists would never feel that pressure because they agree with the institution they work for, with the principles of any newspaper or RTE. If you work at an institution, any institution for 10, 20, 30 years, most likely you agree by and large with the principles. Mm. Otherwise, you would leave, you'd be kicked out. So mm. a journalist who agrees with the editorial office and the, the ownership will not feel their influence in one way or another because they, they agree with uh, the directing lines. So that's why if you ask a journalist, he may well say, well, I was never influenced by management. Mm. And that's probably true on the surface because uh, there's no reason to influence someone that thinks the same as you. Yeah. Uh, but some journalists, of course, are critical and they're aware of what's going on. And those are the ones that will say, well, yeah, here I tried to be critical of this. And I was told that's too far. Don't, don't go there. Uh, but that's only, I suppose, a minority, big or small, but it's not representative of all journalists, of course. And that's why sometimes you hear editors say, no, no, I have never any pressure from management, from uh, the ownership or from uh, advertisers. And it's probably true in some respect. Mm. If there are two right wingers, well, then, yeah. you know, so that's why, that's how I would answer that question. Uh, would you agree or disagree that there is RTE bias concerning water protests? Yeah, I agree there is, but not in the way that some people say. Some people say that it's biased in favor of the water protest. Um, mm. Is there to recruit uh, leftists? I think Pat Rabbit said that. Mm. I would say there is bias, but against them. Uh, it doesn't mean that every time you have this topic discussed that it's negative. It just means that, by and large, it's not a very favorable uh, coverage uh, of, uh, of the water protests. You had the on the Late Late Show, um, Paul Murphy was interviewed there by uh, Turbidy, and then it was very negative. You could see that you know, he really clearly didn't like the agenda yeah. of uh, the water protests. And the water protests are very, very challenging for power because uh, they're very democratizing, democratizing of the, of the country. It's people trying to have a say in decisions that affect their lives. Sometimes you could say, the tactics are not the best, or you can debate that, but by and large, it's a movement that people are trying to have more control than they had before over what's going on in their neighborhood or in the country. So that's extremely challenging for power because people in power do not want people to get involved. Otherwise, nobody would vote to have a big bang bailout out of the bondholders or a bad healthcare system. People would be more progressive than uh, people in power usually. Uh, and so that's why the state broadcaster will have a negative uh, impact uh, on, uh, on that. And again, propaganda is not just like, uh, oh, everything is negative, like I said, because that would be a bit too obvious and it mm. wouldn't work like that. So there is like Paul Murphy is allowed to talk and say exactly what he wants, but it works more in a way that you don't have um, that many um, instances of coverage of water protests it'll come late when it's really big and then you have to to cover it because it's all in the streets so people mm. know about it so it's more in that way or you have a paul murphy there richard boyd barrett and then next to them you have one or two government uh people who just say the opposite so people who watch it's a bit hard to have an opinion based on that you could have an opinion based on other things but just if you just watch a clip with two people who are contradicting each other in two or three minutes. Mm. It's not exactly convincing one way or another. Uh, so it's more in that way that it works otherwise. Okay. Um, there's an argument like with Pat Rabbit and Joan Burton that maybe that they're, it's going to force maybe RT not to cover the water protests because they're yeah. different viewpoints. What are your maybe opinions? They'll, 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 uh, they'll yield the pressure, you mean? Yeah, yeah maybe, I mean, I, I mean, those things, it's also, this is a popular thing. So mm. if RT wants any kind of support in the population, which is not their driving agenda, but still it has to count at some level, mm. they have to cover them. Uh, but mm. like the tabloids also, tabloids have a working class readership, so they can't like just 
trash any issue that's of relevance to ordinary people because they wouldn't have many readers. So they have to do it to some extent. Uh, that's how propaganda works anywhere. Right? It's not just lies all the time. It's about uh, confusing the issues and you present something, but then you present another point and mm. then and in the end it remains a bit vague. That's, that's the beauty of it. Um, so the way RT will go, I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, by and large, they'll stay as they are, a conservative organization. But you can have uh, exceptions depending on, uh, like just like the fact that Paul Murphy, Joe Higgins are in the parliament now. They mm-hmm. have to cover them at some point. It's not yeah. like if you know they can ignore them indefinitely. Mm-hmm. So there's changes like that. But by and large, it's a conservative uh, outlet. Okay. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three.